the past couple of days we've been talking about exponential functions. Now we're going to switch gears and talk about actually the inverse of those, which is logarithms. First thing I want to do is talk about some rate, excuse me, some ways that logarithms are used in the real world. In class we watched a video on the earthquake in Haiti. In earthquakes, as you probably know, it's okay if you don't, are measured by something called the Richter scale. And the Richter scale is a logarithmic scale. So this is what you're used to seeing. The Richter scale, usually the way it's done is they go from 0 to 10. Okay, what's a little deceptive about using this is you may think, okay, if an earthquake is a 2 and then another earthquake is a 4, you think, okay, well the 4 must have been twice as powerful as the one that was a 2. But that's actually not the case. It turns out the one that's a 4 is 100 times more powerful than the one that's a 2. And here's the reason. Um, earthquakes vary in power a lot. Okay, 0 represents the uh, the power of the smallest earthquake that can be felt, basically. So the smallest earthquake we're e actually able to record um, is a zero. But we've had earthquakes all the way up to, say, like 9.5. And those 9.5 earthquakes are over a billion, that's a B, billion, times stronger than that zero earthquake. I mean, that is a huge number. Um, and earthquakes just vary a whole lot in between there. So rather than having a scale that goes all the way from zero to like 10 billion, they created this. Because let's be honest, you know, we know a million is a big number and we know a billion is a big number. But the difference between them, I, I don't think we can fully appreciate it. It's just too big for us. I mean, I, I include myself there. I don't think I can really appreciate the difference. But I can appreciate the difference between four and eight. So it, the logarithm helps break this down. Because what this really represents is actually 10 raised to these numbers. Oh, and also, just so you know, the Richter scale is typically drawn from 0 to 10, th but it doesn't stop at 10. You can go on forever and ever on the Richter scale. It's potentially possible to have an earthquake that's an 11 or a 12 or even a 20. It's just that we've never measured one any higher than 9 point something. And so they only do the scale from 0 to 10 most of the time. But it's potentially could go on forever. Okay, so if you look at this now, 10 to the first is 10. 10 squared is 100. So the difference between 10 and 100 is a factor of 10. So each time you go up on the Richter scale, your earthquake becomes 10 times more powerful. So a 2 is 10 times more powerful than a 1. A 3 is 100 times more powerful, 4 is 1,000, 5 is 10,000, 6 is 100,000, and so on. And you can do that starting anywhere. I could start at a 4 and say, okay, well, a, a 5 is 10 times more powerful. Oops, sorry about that. Oh, dear. Okay, there we go. Uh, if we start at 4 again, a 5 is 10 times more powerful, 6 is 100 times, 7 is 1,000 times, and so on. So each time you go up, it's a factor of 10. So I want to look at a real example of how they have measured the Richter, measured an earthquake using the Richter scale before. So right here we have the formula for the Richter scale. It says R equals log of I over I naught. So the I represents the intensity of the actual earthquake. That's going to vary depending on what earthquake we're talking about. And then we have the, this is called I naught or I zero. Uh, it's usually said I naught. And this is the basically smallest measurable earthquake. So this is one that is barely felt, if at all. This is the smallest measurable earthquake, and that's a constant. That does not change. So this is this is true facts here. The intensity of the 1906 San Francisco earthquake was 10 raised to the 8.3 times bigger than that zero earthquake, the barely felt earthquake. So to give you an idea, 10 raised to the 8.3 is north of 100 million. So the one in San Francisco in 1906 was over 100 million times more powerful than the zero earthquake, the barely felt earthquake. So we're going to find its value on the Richter scale. Well, this right here is our intensity for the earthquake in 1906. So we have R equals 
log of i, that's 10.83, excuse me, 10 raised to the 8.3, i0 over i0, because it's 10 to the raised to the 8.3 times more powerful than i0. That's why I draw it that way. So if you notice, the i0s cancel out, and you just get 10 raised to the 8.3. Well, if you plug log of 10 raised to the 8.3 in your calculator, the result is just 8.3. So that puts it in more manageable numbers for us. It's a whole lot easier for us to grasp 0 through 10. Quickly, I want to look at one other log example, and that's one that can model someone's height. The percentage of adult height attained by a boy who is x years old can be modeled by f of x equals 29 plus 48.8 log of x plus 1. So our f of x in this case is the percent of the adult height. So in other words, once f of x equals 100, that means the person is their full height. They're not going to grow any more. Or if f of x was 50, that means they're half their adult height. And then they ask the question, at what percent of his adult height is an 8-year-old? So all we need to do is plug in 8 for x. So we get f of x equals 29 plus 48.8 log of 8 plus 1, because we plug in 8 for his age. If you plug this in your calculator, you get something in the neighborhood of 75, meaning he's 75% of his adult height. Someone commented in class that that seemed like pretty tall for an 8-year-old to already be at 75% of the adult height. But if you think about it, 75% is not all that tall. If uh, someone is going to grow to be 6 feet tall, 75% is just four and a half feet tall. Uh, so it, you know, that's not necessarily all that tall for an eight-year-old.